Hi everyone, um, this is Mitchell for the second series of uh, Neurodiversity and Me. Today I have the pleasure of being joined by our guest Victor, who is a pharmacist who did his degree in King's College London and he's also worked for the organisation previously um, before as well. Um, so hello Victor. I'm Mitchell, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thanks. And you? Yeah, doing well, doing well, thank you. Perfect. Um, so for today's uh, talk, we'll basically be focusing on neurodiversity and culture. But before we talk about neurodiversity and culture, I have um, your first question for you. Please tell us a bit about yourself and your journey of being a part of the neurodiverse community. Right, so um, I guess, so to keep a long story short, I guess, the first thing I'd say is, I feel like from the very beginning, like especially in primary school, I think that's when I first started to see that, you know, <clears throat> I guess the things that I would, I don't know, look, look for, for grat gratification or like in the classroom, the dynamics in the classroom, they weren't really suited to, I guess, like a, a child of, of like myself. So a lot of the time I'd find myself getting into trouble or getting into situations whereby <clears throat> it wasn't really seen favorable in a class environment. And you'd see, especially as a child, you get punished or you get left out. And it didn't really help, especially being like a foreigner as well. I couldn't really speak mm -hmm. the language too well. So there was also a language barrier. But I guess that's when I first started to notice that, right, things aren't, I'm not really the same as everyone else here. And then um, it's, it was, especially in secondary school, that was when, obviously, because things start to get more important. Mm -hmm. And that's when the uh, the teachers were, like, obviously the, the kicking out of the classroom was one thing, but also they'd report home saying, okay, he's been very distracted. He's um, easily distracted or um, difficult to stay focused. And these were the things that they were saying to describe me. And um, it, it'd be very difficult for me because obviously for someone like myself and for, for someone of my background and my parents, it was very important that we get good education and that we would pursue our career by the educational means. And that was obviously difficult without being in the classroom and without being present. And being a very like inquisitive and curious person, I, I also enjoyed learning very much. So. It, it was quite counterintuitive on my part, but it was, I found it difficult to not be any other way or to be any other way, sorry. And then um, obviously that was when the teacher started to recommend that, look, I think the Victor should be on medications and um, otherwise it's a little bit difficult to, for us to keep him in the classroom. And also it was, it was difficult because I remember in science, which was my favorite subject, it was, <laughs> I wasn't actually allowed to do triple science oh. because they, yeah, because they said that I wasn't, that I was too much of a risk to the other like, students. Even though I was a straight A star, straight A student, I wasn't allowed into the top set because I would distract the other top students around me. So that's how, obviously, like, for my journey, mm. I feel like I've been like, held back and I feel like I've been wronged in a sense, you know? Not, not too much, but in the sense that I wasn't able to fulfill my full potential, I feel like, because of the way that the stigma around, like, um, the, the differences that we experience. Mm. And I feel like that's, that's, yeah, that's, in a nutshell, I feel like that's me. Yes, that is such a great summary. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. Um, as a sort of related question to that, um, for the purposes of our viewers knowing your background if you could please tell us um your cultural background right so culturally and uh ethnically i'm actually half nigerian M my dad's nigerian yoruba mm -hmm. my boys are <laughs> exactly yes i know yeah. i noticed the shirt yeah. <laughs> yeah of course and then um also my mom's japanese so i was actually born and raised for the first six years of my life in japan mm -hmm. so that was obviously my first language and in Japan we don't speak much English so mm -hmm. that's where the first language barriers started 
Mm. And of course, in, in Japan, the way I was built different to all the kids there, I was a lot bigger, I was a lot stronger, faster, everything. And from there, I already had like, problems of being outcast in a sense, just because mm. of, I was the only colored guy in literally mm. the whole in the whole town, especially wow. going to that school, you know? Mm. Um, I guess from there, it was, it was all a little bit different, but that's, that's my cultural background. Mm. I'm very proud of it too. <laughs> yes, as you should be, definitely. Um, so we'll then go on to question two. Our question is, what are your beliefs on the role culture could play on how neurodiversity is viewed? Right, so my view is definitely that, <clears throat> especially if you're from a, I, I don't even like saying minority ethnicity, mm. but if you're from an ethnic minority, then I feel like already you have these um, thoughts or you get these um that people telling you that you're different and people also treating you differently. And I feel like already because of the stigma that we have associated with, especially black people, I can mm. only speak for myself, you know, but especially for black people, I feel like we have this stigma of being like um, naughty children. Mm. And also that stigma obviously goes through the, the, the ages as well. Mm. And I feel like because of that, you start to be, you know, if you have a problem or if teachers have a problem with the class, it's very easy for them to single out the person that is different from the rest of you, you know, from the rest of the class. And I feel like that's already when the seeds are planted, you know, especially during, like I know for a lot of black children during nursery, mm. it's a problem because black children, they, we have a lot of energy, you know? That's true. That's just natural within us, mm. you know, in our genes. And I feel like because of that, we get labeled already as problematic because mm. it's, it's a difficult thing for people to um, to deal with, you know, mm. I feel like especially for teachers. And uh, obviously, that I, I know they have a difficult job mm. and I very much respect that. But I think that's when the seeds are planted already. And also the, the children around you don't make it too much easier as well. Mm. I think from there, definitely, that that's where the culture, cultural background starts to play a role. And then um, obviously from there, you get told that you have to, stand up for yourself you have to express yourself and be different you know mm. and be yourself as well especially so it's very difficult to try and be yourself whilst also trying to fit in with everyone else at the same time just so that you can you know be deemed as normal be seen as normal mm. you know that's very true and um with that as well i guess it's so difficult for parents as well like our parents have to go through a lot in terms of hearing from the schools and stuff and i guess then being given like a label for mm. example um could have an impact in terms of your parents um from your experience um and in general how do you think parents will be affected um, culturally by um, the labels that we have in terms of neurodiversity and the stigma attached to it. Right, so, <clears throat> uh, so like, I, like I mentioned, I'm Nigerian, so mm. especially if I know that this is true for my other Africans as well, but for Africans, I feel like it's very difficult for especially men to get and to go and seek help mm. and also to admit that you have um, difficulties in certain areas and like I said I know that from an African background education is a, is absolute paramount importance you know mm -hmm. so I think as a parent it puts a lot of pressure on them I know that for certain mm -hmm. I've seen it in my parents that you know it's it's very worrying when your school are telling you okay your, your child might not be able to come to our school anymore you know mm -hmm. or he, he's not able to go to this lesson because of this reason or he's struggling in this area and we not we we don't really have or we don't really have the answers or solutions to be able to help him and i think that that it puts a lot of stress on the parents you know and mm. the a lot of parents deal with it in different ways you know luckily i have very supportive parents and throughout my upbringing you know they were obviously trying to support me throughout the whole thing uh, without the use of um, like medicines or without you know because those are associated with a whole different that is true. Uh, <laughs> <effect>. yeah <laughs> so 
that's that's a different topic in total and one I don't really have experience with, luckily. Mm -hmm. But um, because of that, I think it's very difficult, especially depending on where you actually grew up, to have these mm -hmm. outlets to get rid of the energy to to also just um, like ex express your differences and ex being yourself, you know, mm -hmm. and doing things that you do enjoy without being like a problem or an mm -hmm. eyesore to anyone else. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, diff it's very difficult for parents to find that balance between uh, what to listen to, to with the frustrated teachers or maybe with um, teachers that don't really quite understand why you're a certain way and also trying to, you know, make you be the best you can be. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, I think, I think that's a very difficult thing for a parent to deal with, especially if you don't have uh, the resources around you to maybe send your child to a football club or send your child to do whatever that mm. does that will benefit them, you know, or to swim in or whatever it is for that person. I think that is a very tough thing for a mother to deal with, especially if, for example, if, if the child isn't doing the homework or doesn't understand it, Mm -hmm. And maybe their parents aren't so like, inclined, you know, mm -hmm. it definitely can be like um, very difficult in that sense. Absolutely. Definitely very true. And with that, we'll mm -hmm. move on to our third question. Okay, so the third question does touch a bit on what you discussed earlier in terms of like access to facilities. Mm -hmm. um, so research has shown that individuals from ethnically diverse backgrounds have poorer access to diagnostic services. How can we as a society change this? Mm, that is a very, that's a very difficult question to answer, mm -hmm. to be honest, just because I think the problems are very deeply rooted, I think, mm -hmm. within our culture, you know, because especially being African, we have a sense of pride and a sense of, mm -hmm. you know, like responsibility to provide and stop, be strong and mm -hmm. be this, the man, you know, mm -hmm. or what, what society called the, the man of the house, you know. Mm -hmm. And so with that, I think comes certain, um, I, w I would say quite toxic thoughts, mm -hmm. you know, and I think because of that, like I said, it's difficult for even the first step of, step of admitting that you have this mm. difficulty or you have this problem. And um, I think that that should be the first thing because especially for the people that are the leaders of our society, mm. I think that that should be the first step because in dealing with, um, with these stigmas and mm. you know, the first thing shouldn't be to label a a child is a problem. Everyone has mm. these differences. Exactly. Everyone has these difficulties, you know? Mm. And regardless of whether you are like neurodiverse or whether you are anything, you know, mm -hmm. not even on the spectrum or anything at all, you mm. know, like, I think that the first step should just be realizing that everyone is different mm -hmm. and the, the educational system, especially from a young age, mm -hmm. should help in facilitating you express yourself mm -hmm. in a positive way. I feel like that would be absolutely a great start mm -hmm. because then you wouldn't be labeled as a problem child and mm -hmm. you wouldn't be labeled as, especially when a child starts to believe things, you know, the, the mind is very, very strong. And right, if you right. start to believe, oh, I'm not so great at maths, I'm not so great at reading or like, oh, I'm actually, I'm, I'm a problem, problematic mm -hmm. child. My behaviors are a problem. You start to definitely believe those and play into those certain um uh, play into those stigmas yourself mm. without even realizing and i feel like if they weren't um pressed on you as a child you didn't have these labels from the beginning right mm -hmm. i feel like then you would be able to see a whole diverse people mm. that would all be able to help each other and uplift each other rather than putting each other down and saying oh no you're distracting you're rubbish at this or you're mm. this you know, these labels, I think that they are harmful, to, especially mm. to, to developing and growing mind. Hmm. 
I definitely agree with that. And like you rightfully said, like even neurotypicals have differences. Like some may be good at football, but they're not good at science, and we don't call it the scientifica. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we do need to stress the importance that neurodiverse people like neurotypical, we have our strengths and we have our weaknesses like yeah. everyone else. Um, so yes, I definitely agree with that. And with that, we'll go to our final question. Final question is a bit of a light note to end on question, which is um, we've had the pleasure of having you work for us between 2017 to 2019. Um, what has been your highlight in terms of working for the organisation? Right, that's a, that's a nice question. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I must say I've really enjoyed every single time that I've been uh, I've been called upon to work with you guys and with the, the team as everyone around me has always been so uh, welcoming and you know we've all we've all got this the same goal of trying to make the society an, an easier and a better place for for everyone you know and but I do feel like when it comes to a highlight it has to be the people that I'm that we're working for you know mm. and. When when you when you go into that school and you see these um the children engaging, especially when you go in for the first session, mm -hmm. and you see the um, the dynamics of the classroom, and you see how some of the kids, you, obviously the classroom full of a whole variety of people. Yeah. And I feel like seeing my highlight was seeing certain children who were very reserved mm -hmm. and didn't really seem too interested, being at the end of the at the end of the session, the the, the last session them being one of the first people to put their hands up for the role players or mm -hmm. being the ones that you know shares their knowledge mm -hmm. and then because and especially when you see in a classroom there are people that have these diagnoses already mm -hmm. and true. you know especially at the beginning they're already labeled as such and mm -hmm. so kids around them they look at them and point at them or etc mm -hmm. but when the whole classroom then becomes educated it's more of um I feel like it's uplifting for that person that's already mm -hmm. had those diagnoses, but also for the whole classroom, they now understand it a little bit better. And it's not just, oh, you're this or you're that. Mm -hmm. It's more of a, oh, right, so this is the way that we can help, or this is the reason why so-and-so. It's not actually your fault. It's not that you're trying to be a, a problem. It's actually that, right, so you have these physical problems or you have these physical differences, sorry. Mm -hmm. and that you struggle with you know and mm -hmm. I feel like that is so empowering because mm -hmm. especially when these children you just hope that and you just know that because they're interested in it they're just bound to go home or go to these different places and talk about it you mm -hmm. know and that that raising the awareness and planting the seed in the classroom mm -hmm. I feel like if that wasn't like multiplied and like um scaled to onto a larger scale mm -hmm. and everyone was able to speak freely about it and stuff like this that it, it will make a massive difference, you know? And when you see that difference in a small scale, that absolutely is the highlight for me, definitely. Definitely, and that is such a wonderful answer to end on. Thank you so much for uh, taking part in this interview. No, of course, thank you very much for having me.